Hello everybody and welcome to our class video about biconditionals and definitions. Our learning goals are that you will be able to write and interpret a biconditional statement and that you will be able to recognize and write a good definition. Okay, so what is a biconditional statement? Well, we know what a conditional statement is. We covered that in the last video. That's if A then B. So like take this example, if an angle measures less than 90 degrees, then the angle is acute. That is a true statement. Okay, so, and we also know what a converse is. So that changes it to if B then A. So that would be if an angle is acute, then the angle measures less than 90 degrees. What do you think about that? Well, that statement is also true. So both statements are true. Both the conditional statement and its converse are true. Okay, that's when we get a biconditional statement. So if the original statement and its converse are both true, then you can combine them as a biconditional statement. Okay, we do that with a special phrase if and only if. Sometimes we'll abbreviate it as an if with two f's, I-F-F. -F. So anytime you see that in a sentence, anytime you see I-F-F, -F, you read it as if and only if. Okay, so let's look at an example. Okay, so here's the statements we just looked at. If an angle measures less than 90 degrees, then it's acute. And if an angle is acute, then it measures less than 90 degrees. Both of those are true. So I can write it as a biconditional statement. Okay, so I'm going to take the two parts, the hypothesis and the conclusion, and put the phrase if and only if between them. So we'll start the sentence, an angle is acute if and only if the angle measures less than 90. Okay, the, so this is saying that the only way an angle can be acute is if it measures less than 90. If it's not less than 90, it's not acute. So those two things have to go together. This part and this part always occur together. The only way that it can be acute is if it measures less than 90 degrees. Okay, so this is the definition of an acute angle. Which leads me to our second topic, is what makes a good definition? Well, every good definition can be written as a biconditional. Okay? It can be written as, it is this, if and only if it meets these criteria. Okay? Also, a good definition uses only previously defined words. Like, take this non-example. A circle is a figure with no corners. Well, this has several problems with it. First, corners is not very well defined. We, it's not like we have a good geometry definition of a corner established. So, it doesn't make a good definition if you can't build it off of other definitions. This also has the problem of not being a biconditional. Because... You know, there are other shapes that have no corners that aren't circles, like ellipses, which are, is another word for oval. Okay, so just because it has no corners doesn't mean it's a circle. So it, we could not write that as a biconditional. This is a bad definition. When we talk about using previously defined words, like with our acute angle example, I'd have to define what an angle is before I can define what an acute angle is, and before I can define what an angle is, I'd have to define what a ray is, and so on and so forth. We build definitions off of previously defined words. The other feature of a good definition is that it's precise and specific. Here's another non-example. A ton is a large amount of weight. Which, while that may be true, we're not being very specific. How much is a large amount, anyway? It'd be better to say this. A ton is a weight of 2,000 pounds. 
There, now we're being specific. We know exactly how much weight a ton is. Okay, so let's look at one more set of examples. And I want to see if you can pick out the good definition out of these. All right, so our first contestant on the Good Definition Show is this one right here, who says that a triangle is a shape with three sides. Our second contestant, a snake is an animal that has scales. Our third contestant, a midpoint is a point in the middle of a line segment. And our fourth contestant, water is a compound with the chemical formula H2O. Okay, you got it? Can you pick out which one is the good definition? If you need a little bit more time, just pause the video so you can think about it a bit. Okay, here we go. So, now A looks pretty good. A triangle is a shape with three sides. I'm thinking some of you may have gone for that one. It has one problem, though. Shape is not a very well-defined term. It's not very specific. We haven't, like, what, what, is, what makes a shape? I mean, we kind of intuitively know what that means, but we haven't defined it, really. So it would be better to say a triangle is a polygon with three sides. There, now we're being specific. So, A is not a good definition. All right, what about B? A snake is an animal that has scales. Well... Not all animals that have scales are snakes, though. I can think of a counterexample. That would be a fish. So, hmm, that's a good description of a snake, but it's not a good definition. Okay, we couldn't write that as a true biconditional. Now, that also means, unfortunately, that although I could say, it would be a good description to say that Mr. Henning's math videos are awesome, but that would just be a description. Not all awesome things are Mr. Henning's math videos. Darn it. Oh well. What about C? The problem with C is that it, middle is not a very good term. What do we mean by it in the middle of a line segment? Is it just somewhere between the two endpoints? Or is it like exactly halfway through? Well, because of that, that doesn't make a good definition either. The good definition is D. Water is a compound with the chemical formula H2O. It's a true biconditional because water is always H2O and H2O is always water. Those two always go together. And it's being very specific. Okay? So we know there's no imprecise words in that sentence. And all of those terms would have been defined in your chemistry class. So, D is a good definition. Alright, well, I'll see you guys in class and we'll look at some other definitions. See ya!